Breath of the Wild may not be known as the easiest Zelda game out there, but the ability to scavenge for resources and cook them into meals can help a player get the upper edge significantly. Whether your purpose is to just gain some extra hearts in the middle of a battle, or even to give yourself unique buffs to help things like combat or movement speed, it's no secret why someone would try to use and understand the system as much as possible. But due to this game's lack of a proper guide on how the system works in favor of experimentation, there is a ton of important information left out to the player about how this system works, such as the different potency levels of each ingredient that can contribute to getting a buff, and even how the combination of these ingredients can affect the duration of the set buffs. That sometimes makes a player think that they are under or overutilizing a certain ingredient to get the desired effect. Like, if you're trying to get a level 3 stealth buff, do you need to waste 5 full silent princesses? Or could you supplement some of those with cheaper stealth ingredients to get the same buff with an even longer duration? So after doing some in-game research along with the help of data mines, I was able to figure out the exact info behind ingredient potency and effects in this game that will allow you to make the most out of the system by using your ingredients as efficiently as possible. This video will also include the easiest and most efficient ways a player can farm out the best ingredients for cooking, along with any and all other cooking tips about things like criticals that will allow you to master the system for utilization in your playthroughs. So without further delay, let's get right into the hidden cooking stats of Breath of the Wild. So I'm going to do my best to quickly skim through the basics of the system so we can get into the more advanced topics. As we know, cooking multiple food ingredients together will create a meal, while cooking monster parts and bugs together will create elixirs. The only main difference between these two things is that meals give out hearts when consumed along with any potential buffs, while elixirs give out no hearts but usually boast higher buff durations in return. But since bug ingredients are generally less potent and don't offer the hearts anyways, the majority of cooking in this game is done just with food, which is what I highly recommend sticking with. Besides, your bug should be saved for upgrading armor, and your monster parts should be saved for trading them with Kilton so he can buy things from his shop. But when it comes to getting hearts while cooking, the stats behind this are very simple to understand, as the base hearts for every single ingredient are doubled. So if you cook a single apple that usually just gives a half a heart, it turns into a simmered fruit which gives a whole heart. And if you throw in a combination that consists of a raw meat, a raw prime meat, and raw gourmet meat which all natively add up to 5.5 hearts, cooking them together will create a meat skewer that will give us 11 hearts. The picture and names of all the meals in this game are purely aesthetic, and don't affect anything about the meal itself. This is all quite simple to understand, but where things get trickier is understanding how ingredients can unlock certain buffs for your food, and how to increase the factors such as potency and duration. For an example, if we throw 4 mighty thristles in a cooking pot, we will get a level 1 attack buff, in comparison to throwing in 4 mighty bananas, where we will get a level 3 attack buff. The potency stat of each ingredient is completely invisible to the player's eye, but after doing some testing, I was able to figure out the exact potency levels of each ingredient and how they all contribute to getting a higher level buff. So in terms of attack foods, the foods with the potency level of 1 are the mighty thristles, the foods with the potency 2 are the bananas, mighty carps, razor shrooms, and razor claw crabs, and the foods with potency 3 are the mighty porgies. And in order to unlock a new tier of buff, each stat has a specific point threshold required to do so. For attack, one or more potency point creates a level 1 buff, at least 5 or more cumulative creates a level 2, and 7 or more creates a max level 3 buff. This is why the 4 mighty thristles was only able to create a level 1 buff because it only added to 4 points, while the 4 mighty bananas were able to create a level 3 buff because it added to 8 points. And utilizing this information, we can mix and match the mighty ingredients to get a desired effect without using excess materials. This system works the exact same way for every single food related buff in the game, despite boasting different numbers, so I thought I would take a couple minutes to showcase all the potency numbers and thresholds for each type, along with the best locations to find all these ingredients. For defense, it's very similar to the attack ones, as not only are the point thresholds for each tier the same, the potency of each ingredient mirrors that of the attack buffs. The cheap flour has a potency of 1, most other foods and meats have 2 potency, while the porgy in specific has 3. The easiest ingredient here to farm out would be the iron shrooms, as the forest surrounding Batria Lake has roughly 40 of them, which can make roughly 10 level 3 defense dishes in itself. 
Next, for stealth up, the point margins for the levels are slightly higher than the attack and defense ones, and there's not as many ingredients for this either. Although these high tier foods are a bit harder to gather for, you can find a good amount of the tier 3 silent princesses by going to the Satori Mountain or any sacred location in the world like Fairy Fountains. And if you're looking for any more beyond that, the same forest that has all the iron shrooms in the past example has roughly 30 of the tier 2 silent shrooms, which is ideal for farming. Now for speed up, you'll notice that there are no tier 3 ingredients, which will be true for all the future buffs beyond this point, but the potency thresholds are back to 1, 5, and 7 just like the attack and defense ones. Although the majority of these ingredients can be quite hard to farm out due to half of them requiring you to climb, the tier 2 lotus seeds are quite the opposite, as you can find them just about anywhere in the Lanero region, specifically in this stretch of land in the swampy area which has roughly 40 of them. Now, the shock resistance, which is a very underutilized yet important buff, has its point thresholds much lower than the rest of them, so it's quite easy to make the high tier dishes. Although you can find a decent bit of the tier 2 zap shrooms on the path leading to the Gerudo Desert, by far the most condensed area for farming this ingredient is in the rock woods in Nikala, which contains roughly 30 of them. We're almost to the end when it comes to all the ingredient buff locations, but these last three are the simplest to go over, as they are all the temperature related buffs that only go up to level 2 anyways. For cold resistance, the level 1s are the Saflinas and the Spicy Peppers, while the level 2s are the Sizzleflint Trouts and the Sunshrooms, and the point threshold to get a level 2 buff is 6. For heat resistance, level 1s are the Saflinas and the Hydromelons, Level 2s are the Chilfin Trouts and the Chill Shrooms, with the point threshold for a level 2 buff also being 6. And finally, for fire resistance, level 1s are the Fireproof Lizards, while level 2s are the Smotherwing Butterflies, with the level 2 point threshold being 7. But keep in mind that the only fireproof ingredients are bugs and only come in elixir form, so it's important that you mix them with monster parts instead of food. In terms of finding all these ingredients, the best cold resistance ones to farm are the sun shrooms, which are common around the Gutcheck Rock area, and for heat resistance, I would recommend going to the Nature Snowfield in Lonero, as this area has roughly 70 of them condensed together. But for fire resistance, since most of the bug spawns are randomized, the only reliable way you can get the insects with these effects is at the Southern Mine, which has increased spawn rates for the lizards. However, given how annoying these guys are to find, it's still far more convenient to just use the Flamebreaker armor as a supplement. But now that we know all the potency effects for each ingredient type, the next thing we need to figure out is how the duration of all these effects are calculated. Every attack and defense ingredient adds 50 seconds, all speed up ones add a minute, stealth ingredients add 2 minutes, and all elemental ones including shock resistance add 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So, putting any 5 attack foods in a pot which are only 50 seconds apiece will create an attack buff that'll last for 4 minutes and 10 seconds, while putting any 5 stealth foods in a pot which are 2 minutes will create a stealth buff that'll last for 10 minutes. The potency tier of each of these ingredients are irrelevant in calculating duration, as it's all about quantity. Depending on your use for these buffs, some of these durations can seem a bit short, but fortunately, there are specific ingredients in this game that are primarily used to extend the duration of these buffs, despite not always boasting extra hearts. As you can see, most of these are pretty weak, with the exception of the dragon parts, specifically the horn shards which boost the meal's duration all the way to 30 minutes, which is ideal for cooking. The best way to farm these out is by waiting at the top of the Floria waterfall in Farron, Set the time till morning via campfire, and the dragon will spawn right in front of your eyes. If you immediately fly up using its updraft and shoot at the horn and let it hit the ground, you can set it back to morning and keep doing this over and over again. And then when you're finished, you can collect all of them at once. Within maybe 5 minutes, you can have a good dozen of these, which will lead to hours of boost time that you can spend on any boost of your choice, which is super helpful and can drastically change the way that you play this game. But now that we know how to make the best buff foods in the game, there's only a few more types of foods we have to elaborate on more, which are the stamina, endura, and hardy foods. Just like the buff foods, every ingredient of these types has a set amount of potency points, and depending on the cumulative level of potency, you can cross new thresholds that'll be more effective. For stamina, the ingredients range between giving 1 and 4 points apiece, and the max amount of stamina you can get is 3 wheels with 11 points. And for Endura, the ingredients will net you anywhere between 1 and 4 points, where the max effect will give you 2 extra wheels after reaching 20 points. 
Farming out these ingredients can be a bit tricky considering how spaced out they can be, but you can find a clean row of roughly 15 bright-eyed crabs on this coastline above the swamp, which are good for stamina. And your best hopes of getting a decent amount of the Endera carrots, which are required for the two extra wheels of stamina, are in the forest of the Satori Mountain. But out of these two types, I would mainly recommend sticking with the Endura, as cooking just a single ingredient will give you a full restore of stamina, while it'll take many stamina foods combined to do the same. The same goes with hearty foods, but each of these have their own amounts of extra hearts to give as well, which are all added together when using multiple ingredients. By far the easiest ones to farm out are the durians that are native to the jungle region, as this little spot near Farron Tower has roughly 20 of them, which is ideal for farming. And since we are here, I should probably mention a great spot where you can find a large portion of the attack boosting bananas, as we didn't mention that in the earlier attack section of the video. But this is a great place to go if you want to farm out a large portion of them. In fact, I thought it would be best to include a map with all the best farming locations we talked about in this video combined, so feel free to use this as a reference so you can find these ingredients in your playthroughs. But with all of this said, there is only one more hidden stat we have to talk about before we wrap up this video, which are the critical effects. Whenever you cook, there is a 10% chance at random that you will unlock one of the following effects for your dish. 3 extra hearts, plus 5 minutes buff duration, plus 1 potency tier, 1 extra temporary heart, or an extra 2 fifths of a stamina wheel, depending on what type of dish you make. However, there are two ways you can boost this critical chance to 100 to guarantee this every time. One would be by adding a star fragment or dragon part to your dish, and another would be to cook during the hour of a blood moon, specifically between the times of 1135 and 1155, which is a really small window, but if you can save a lot of your cooking for between these hours, then you can really maximize your efficiency. But other than that, that's basically everything we need to go over about cooking stats in Breath of the Wild. I know we spent a large portion of this video talking about the stat buffs of food and how to unlock the different tiers, but if you want more information on the exact stats behind these buffs, such as the actual percentages and point increases, I made another stats video going over every single one of these details, which I highly recommend that you check out using the card in the upper right. If you're new to the channel, stats videos like these have been taking the primary focus for a while now. So feel free to check out some of my other stats videos in my Stats of the Wild playlist linked in the description below. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like and subscribe here if you haven't already so you won't miss any future uploads to come. Also, a huge shout out to my amazing patrons and members who help support the content. If you would like to help me out here for as little as a dollar a month, all the info can be found in the description below. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.